Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women in the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till you're back from over there. Hi there, gang. This is Ken Carpenter, kicking off another session of Assorted Stuff, as per your request to Command Performance, Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. And tonight we bring you not one master of ceremonies, not two masters of ceremonies, but three mistresses of ceremonies, Patty, Laverne, and Maxine Andrews. Well, welcome to Command Performance, gals. Which one of you girls is going to do the talking for the outfit? I am. Uh, now, uh, wait a minute. You can't all talk at once. Who's going to talk at once? I'm going to talk by myself. Oh, fine. Maybe you'd better introduce your song, girls. Okay. The Andrews Sisters singing Hippie Tippy Tim. <laughs> Patty, the one in the middle. Now, wait a minute, Patty. Maxine and I are emptying the show, too. Well, empty away, you girl, you. Okay, what's coming up? My girdle, I'm not wearing stockings. Patty! <laughs> Patty, please. There may be men listening. Oh, I hope so. Because stepping up to the command performance microphone now, in answer to a whole stack of your requests, is one of the greatest quartets in the country. Here they are, the Delta Rhythm Boys! <laughs> What's the good of having money when you haven't got your money? I don't go out walking. I ain't for no talking. My baby's done left me. Just a sitting and a rocking. Now if I had been scheming instead of just dreaming, she'd never have left me. Just a sitting and a rocking. Such a lonely papa. Wap, wap, wap. If she don't hurry and come back, I'm a saint to do my papa. Now if I don't find him, I hope you remind her that I'm staying where 
she left me just a sitting and a rocking all day. Never go out walking. You never hear me talking. And I guess I'll never be the same, baby, till you return. Please act right and give me a call. And some night we will have a ball. Broadway was Oklahoma, and to me, the best spot in the whole show was when Celeste Holmes sang, I Can't Say No. Now, for the first time, we bring you not only the song, but the sensational star who introduced it. Here's a command performance for Celeste Holmes. It ain't so much a question of not knowing what to do. I know good right and wrong right since I've been ten. I hear a lot of stories and I reckon they are true about how girls are put upon my man. I know I mustn't fall into the pit, but when I'm with a feller, I forget. <laughs> Give his face a smack But as soon as someone kisses me I somehow sort of want to kiss him back I'm just a fool when lights are low I can't be pretty and quaint I ain't the type that can say How can I be what I ain't? I can't say no Just a fool Here's the 
fellow who's getting to be as much of a habit with you as he is with radio listeners here at home. The man who went to a barber shop and forgot to say when. The haircut himself, Gary Moore. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, my friends, and greetings, gentlemen. Nice to be with you again. And it's especially nice to be working again with you ever-loving Andrews sisters. Well, thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> have you been? Have you been? Have you been? Just fine. Just fine. Just fine. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, that's a nice half-hour program right there. <laughs> You're not kidding. Say, Gary, yeah? tell the truth now. Are you really glad to be with us again? Yep. <laughs> Why, bless your little Addison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. <laughs> You know, you know, Patty, I'm an old singing man myself. You've, um, you've heard of High Low Jack and the Dame. Yes. I used to sing with Mojo, Schnook, and the Boy. <laughs> we, we were quite a hit. We worked for three months in the swanky Benzedrine room of the Fort MacArthur PX. <laughs> Nauseating spot, as I recall it. Gary, this old family reunion's all very well, but it's not what you were invited here for. Oh, Ken? No, Gary. You see, word's been getting around overseas about the warm-up that you and Jimmy do just before your radio show goes on the air each week. Mm -hmm. And uh, rumor has it that it's pretty funny stuff. Oh, well, I wouldn't say that. You wouldn't? No, but I'm awfully glad you did. <laughs> After the program, Ken, you must come with me to the cocktail lounge. We'll smell a damn bar rag together. <laughs> That's what we teach but, uh, look, Gary, we thought it might be a good idea for you and Jimmy to show the command performance listeners just what you do to your audience each week to put them in such a good humor for your show. Oh. oh well, uh, Ken, the first problem in putting on a radio show is to attract an audience to your studio. Hmm? Now, Jimmy and I accomplish this by being so funny on the air that people just can't wait to come down and see us in person. <laughs> <laughs> but just to make sure, we put bear traps in the lobby. <laughs> so we'll assume that we've lured a lot of sucker, uh, people, uh, people through the door... They've been searched by the ushers for concealed weapons, and it's, it's ten minutes before air time. Okay, so then what happens? Well, then our announcer, Howard Petrie, Petrie. <laughs> our announcer, Howard Petrie, comes out and he says, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Durante Moore program, sponsored by the makers of Wacky Snackies, a breakfast food containing no vitamins for people who don't want to be champions. <laughs> to say, unlike, unlike most cereals, Wacky Snackies will neither crackle, pop, snap, nor snip. Pour some into a bowl of milk and it just lies there and gets soggy. <laughs> wacky, Wacky Snackies, Wacky Snackies come to you, friends, in six delicious flavors. Very luscious, plain luscious, fairly luscious, not so luscious, unluscious, and... <laughs> Of course, that speech, Ken, is just to sort of let the people know who the sponsor is. I see. And then uh, Howard Petrie introduces you, huh? Oh, oh no, 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 he doesn't do that. At this point, Ken, a beautiful voice is heard over the loudspeaker. It says, and now, friends, we proudly present that brilliant young comedian, that handsome young man with a million-dollar personality, Gary Moore. And then I put the microphone down and walk out. <laughs> and that's when the warm-up really starts, huh? Yeah, yeah, I say something like as follows. Um, <clears throat> now, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're happy to see your smiling faces again. Those are faces, aren't they? <laughs> I thought they were. I have just returned. I have just returned from a USO tour of the South Pacific, friends. And just before I left, a bunch of GIs got hold of me and asked me to bring back from them a message to the makers of Spam. <laughs> <laughs> they did. They asked me. I, I have the message. I have the message right, right here, and I'll, I'll read it to you. It says, um, Stop. <laughs> friends, the laughter we are leaving completely up to you. You know, on some programs, they actually have an announcer who stands behind the comedian, and when the comedian cracks a joke, the announcer holds up a big sign that says laughter. Well, what the heck, you didn't pay to get in, what can you do? You have to laugh, you see. But there's going to be none of that here tonight. Nobody is going to tell you when to laugh. Of course, at the end of certain jokes, you may feel an ice pick coming up through the center of your seat. <laughs> Well, laugh as soon as we tell the joke, you're going to get it in the end anyhow. <laughs> that, 
I guess France just about completes any instructions uh, we may have for the audience. We're going on the air now in a few minutes, and we do hope you enjoy the show. It should be a good one. We've rehearsed it about 3,670 hours. And just in... What? What is this? What did you say that number was? 2,678. He gods, I've been drafted. <laughs> Jimmy, come back here, will you? Listen, what, what were you doing sitting out there in the audience? Junior, I'm glad you asked me. I was sitting in the back row with a beautiful blonde. With a beautiful blonde? No fooling? Well, just a little. <laughs> You mean you were actually sitting out there in the audience necking? Why, why, at your age, you ought to be ashamed. At my age, I should be proud. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Durant, you mad fool, you. <laughs> Remember, Junior, what sauce for the goose is a lot of fun. <laughs> but to tell you the truth, Junior, I'm lucky to be here at all tonight. What a week I had. Fatiguing, huh? Yes, and tiring, too. <laughs> You know, I was at home last Monday evening, picking the splinters out of my teeth. You see, I had just eaten a club sandwich. <laughs> when I get the message from the White House. Oh, Jimmy, this is very exciting. How did you, how did you get the message? Did the president call you on the phone? No, he sent the message by his carrier pigeon, Herman, who had just been released from active duty with the Coast Artillery. <laughs> what, what did Herman the Pigeon do with the Coast Artillery? He was a spotter. <laughs> Boy, my boy asked some very silly questions. <laughs> but Junior, you'll never guess what the president wanted from me. Huh? He wanted to take the Durandy course on how to play the piano in 3,000 easy lessons. <laughs> Let me see it. A dollar a lesson that makes, uh... Well, before long, I arrived in Washington. <laughs> you, at, you, you stayed at the White House, I presume. In Doobleby. And Gary, what a room I had. Hmm? Red velvet draperies. <laughs> a lovely old drunken fife desk. Seven, uh, heppel white chairs. I don't know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Three Sheridan tables <laughs> and a beautiful golden oak dresser. But Junior couldn't sleep a wink all night. Why not? No bed. <laughs> I'll deduct that for my income tax this year. <laughs> so arising early, I jumped into my olive green suit with the pimento buttons. <laughs> And goes to meet the president. Arriving at his office, I find him deep in consultation with the secretary of the Navy. You don't say. I do say. They were looking through Esquire. <laughs> through Esquire? For what? They were trying to figure out a new shape for a boat that sailors won't mind scrubbing. <laughs> Something nautical, but nice. <laughs> As soon as the president sees I have a ribbon, mm -hmm. he drops everything and takes me to the music room. Oh, that I would like to have seen. Junior was inspiring. The president sat next to me at the piano bench and showed me how much piano he already knew. Mm -hmm. I looked down at the keyboard and what beautiful artistic hands. You could tell those hands belonged to a man of culture and refinement. His hands? No, mine. <laughs> His hands were pretty, too. <laughs> but within a few days, Junior, the president had learned so much from me that he arranged for us to play a duet in Constitution Hall. And what a thrilling moment that was. The house lights dimmed, the hush fell over the audience, the conductor raised his baton. And the president and I played. Ah, the ovation was so flurious. <laughs> a, new, a new team was born, huh? Yes, we are now available for weenie roast oyster fries in the open of very class filling station. <laughs> You know, Jimmy, sometimes I think you're the greatest man in the whole wide world. Thank you, Junior. But this Washington venture is only one of my many triumphs. Let me tell you. I'm sitting in my study putting the finishing touches to my unfinished symphony. When who walks in? My butler, unannounced. <laughs> he hands me a copy of the Philharmonic News, which I was eagerly awaiting. And what do I see right on the front page? A picture. A group picture with a headline reading, Musical America selects the three greatest conductors of all time. Castanini, I, Turby, and me. I'm glad they got recognition, too. <laughs> There's not a jealous bone in my body. And very few muscles. <laughs> but after due consideration, 
I arrived at the conclusion that there's room in this country for more than one great conductor. And gentlemen, let's bow to the incredible. Des Toscanini, I, Kirby, and me. We are definitely the big three. You know, I'll never forget when Toscanini came to me for advice. He said, Jimmy, when I played a nutcracker suite, should I use my left hand or my right hand? I said, neither one. You use a nutcracker. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Randy, you're a genius. <laughs> Toscanini, I, Kirby, and me. That's Toscanini, I, Kirby. They got great outfits. We won't get into a conversary about that. Toscanini's brass section is the talk of the world. Quote. <laughs> Very happy to unquote. <laughs> but I got a piccolo section that's the talk of the town. Chitty beat, chitty beat, chitty beat, chitty beat, chitty beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chitty beat, chitty beat, chitty beat, chitty beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a note. I don't know. If Ingrid Bergman is listening in, are you spellbound? <laughs> this Toscanini, I Kirby, don't make me laugh. Can I play piano? No. Can I play piano? Posterity will tell. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play a solo on the piano, assisted by that great wizard of the drums, Mr. Gary Moore. At the piano, Maestro Durante. On the drums, Maestro Moore. Stop! 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 How do you like that? Here's a guy going in business for himself. <laughs> I couldn't find my place for a minute. Ushers, ushers. Stand erect. Add a little class to the joint. Start again, Mr. Moore. Glad you knew enough to stay out. <laughs> soft, soft, soft. I'm the professor. Soft. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter? You're supposed to follow the melee, not chase it all over the joint. <laughs> Start again, Mr. Moore. Fine. Soft, soft, my soul, soft. Gentlemen, Mr. Moore will not be with us tomorrow night. <laughs> he was taken away, unexpectedly wounded. <laughs> now where the Carnegie Hall boy, a lot on the ball boy. Toscanini, I play me and me. Toscanini, I play me and me. What do I want with wealth? Mm -hmm. Money is the root of 
Mike, that's that for this time. So until the next time, speaking for the whole Command Performance Gang, this is Patty. Maxine. And me. Saying so long and good luck, fellas. <laughs> This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.